Few Rangers players have experienced a more roller coaster career at Ibrox than Fernando Rickson. From the day he signed in 2000 to the present, he has shown steely determination and a tremendous passion for his club. He vividly remembers his reaction when Rangers asked him to come to Ibrox. I couldn't believe it there. I thought it was because my agent first uh, phoned me and uh, they had to contact of course, first uh, the club. And then my agent phoned me and they said, well, uh, Rangers are interested. And I would absolutely not believe it because, oh, no chance. Rangers are absolutely interested. And uh, as soon as it uh, became a reality, uh, well, there was no doubt in my mind that I would definitely uh, straight away wanted to uh, come. So. It's often said that foreign players only consider coming to Rangers to get a chance to play in European football. But that was the furthest thing from Fernando's mind. <laughs> <laughs> I never even thought about Europe, I never even thought about uh, anything. The only thing I thought about uh, was Glasgow Rangers. This big, massive club, unbelievable. I mean, uh, they had to repeat it for at least uh, ten times before I even realised uh, and uh, before I even uh, thought uh, they, they were serious. He might not have been thinking of European competition, but ironically, Fernando's debut was in a 4-1 victory in a Champions League qualifier. Fernando's league debut was against St Johnston, but in a foretaste of what was to come, he picked up his first yellow card. Despite a strong start to the season, Rangers' form began to slip. For every Rangers player, their old firm debut is a crucial fixture. Fernando's was not a happy one. Rangers suffered a 6-2 defeat at Parkhead. The build-up towards the Celtic game um, was, was quite intense and impressive for me because I never experienced anything like that. So once, uh, once the game started, uh, I tried to do my best and uh, it didn't work uh, how, I, how I expected it. And uh, maybe I wanted, too, I wanted it too much and um, I didn't perform at that time. So. The first uh, old film display for me was uh, not a great success. But again, I think uh, I'm happy I experienced it. Not at that time, but I'm again, because I think from the bad things you learn more than the good things. So. Watch it left, Fernando Khan. Kenny Miller had a go at it. Here's Fernando Rickson! His first goal for Rangers, and it's a spectacular one. Despite a goal like that, Fernando wasn't happy with his performances, and neither were the press. Nobody likes uh, to have uh, bad, uh, bad press. So it was a very hard time for me, and um, at one point uh, I was playing so bad that I uh, decided, uh, or well, I nearly decided to stop playing football because I couldn't, uh, I thought, what am I doing? I'm better off uh, uh, doing a job and uh, instead of getting... Uh, um, getting uh, bad reviews the whole time and getting uh, judged the whole time. Um, but then I thought, well, you only get one shot in your life uh, at this, uh, at this uh, stage and um, if you don't work for it, I will regret it the rest of my life. So. He came in and you could see him training, he was a good player, but he uh, made a difficult start as everybody knew. But it's always difficult when, when you come in for a, a foreign league to uh, to come in at the Scottish game, it was, it was hard for him. But Barry and the rest of the team knew how to make the new boy feel at home. Um, I take him out, <laughs> take him out for a night out. Um, no, to it, be honest, he, he settled in. Uh, everybody got on with each other and um, he was part of, the, part of the group. There was no problem with that. Ronald de Boer is waiting for it. And he's going to get it to Moles in the middle. Is this another one? It sure is. Michael Moles. I knew there were uh, Dutch players, so it would help me settle in a bit easier. Nobody else is going to make you kick that ball uh, where it has to go. So it all comes down to your own performance. But of course, they all helped me as much as they could do. And, uh, but the only thing uh, at the end uh, I had to do myself. The following season was to see major changes at Rangers. After a barren season, 
everyone connected with the club wanted success, and Fernando's newfound confidence and versatility meant that he would become a vital part of that plan. And shifted out wide for Rickson, little burst of pace. Stephen Hughes almost in, Kanisha is. It's number two for Rangers on the night. It's the touch by Rickson to eliminate the wider play that sets it up. Lovely run by young Stephen Hughes. Newman. Desperately trying to get players forward. This is Rickson who's done so now. Rickson to strike oh. it! They're straight back into it, Rangers! Two minutes after going, two goals behind. Rickson drove it in, Lazatic deflected it past Rushdu and Rangers are right back in the tight. Here's McCann. That's a better ball forward, here's Kanidja. Kanidja with it, cuts it the wrong way. And there's an excellent goal! Rickson! So the physical part and, and the things I was never worried about because I mean I'm actually suited me better because in Holland I was quite a bit uh, maybe too rough which um, suited me better here in Scotland and uh, it turned out well. At first I thought a little bit too much but look at the alertness of Rickson coming up here. Although Fernando had established a regular first team place the club faced other problems. Fellow Dutchman Michael Moles missed most of that season he was still recovering from his cruciate ligament injury. It was a big loss to Rangers. Uh, Michael was a very uh, talented player and he showed that uh, a lot of lot of games and he had a bit uh, he was a bit unlucky with his uh, with his injury of course coming back with his injury as well because it he had a, had a, a few setbacks after it as well. Uh, but he's an, an unbelievable player. For me, it was an honor to be uh, to to play next to him, and uh, that only made me better because uh, I uh, that's the kind of players will only make other players better. Sheeran straight to Ferguson, not quite the intended with the header. Here's Moles turning brilliantly. He scores. Always a threat, Michael Moles in that position when he's allowed to turn. Despite Fernando's goal against Fenerbahce, Rangers went out of the Champions League. But in the UEFA Cup, they were a force to be reckoned with, reaching the fourth round. In November, they met old adversaries Moscow Dynamo. With Fernando's help, the Ibrox side overwhelmed the Russians, winning 7-2 on aggregate. Ferguson, useful ball in. Komatowski has missed it. And it's 2-0 on the night. I don't think he's got any real complaints there. Fernando Rickson has got himself into position just in front of the goalkeeper. Good work from Flo. Finds Latapi. Lovenkrantz makes a good one. Excellent pass. Chance for Lovenkrantz. It's 4-1 on the night. But for Fernando, the next tie again brought his demons to the surface. He was sent off in the home leg against Paris Saint-Germain which meant he would miss the dramatic penalty shootout victory. Pochettino against Klaus, and he's missed! And Rangers have done it! His disciplinary record was now a cause for concern. My game is always um, at the edge, and that's where I play, and I can't change that. And But uh, for me, my, my game is to play on that edge, and um, sometimes they interpret to go over the light of the edge and sometimes you stay on it and it, it just depends on the game or just depends on what happened. I try to control it as much as possible but um, the, 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 the player and the, the, the football player in me and the, the, the guy in me, that's the way I am. We see him every day coming in and obviously when he wasn't doing too well when he had a, a couple of sending offs and whatever, it was, you could see it was starting to get to him. Um, but I mean, that's when uh, us as players have got to help them and, and then get them through that. I mean, you've got other people in the press and all that, and they've got their own opinion, and it's a free world and everybody's got an opinion, but I would never change the way Fernando is. That's what happens when you're, you're playing with a, a club like Rangers. Sometimes you, you go for the score sometimes just because you're that desperate to win games or that desperate to win a tackle or, or whatever. But we've all, we've all got that wee bit in us. Since then, Fernando's disciplinary record has improved, 
but he realizes in today's game, players still try to intimidate each other on the pitch. If I would dare play against somebody who is always on the edge, I would do that as well. Because I play against players who do that as well, and you try to, to get them uh, so far that they, uh, that they snap. That's a part of football, that, uh, that's a psychology uh, game, and uh, for me is to handle that. And uh, I think I showed I can handle that. I still have my faults, but uh, I think everybody does that. But um, eventually I don't let, my, let them get to me. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, the way I can handle it these days. So there's, there's still in it, McDonald fights with Rickson, and the sandwich goes in there. And Rickson, a little look up, and they just held himself back. In 2001, Rangers were about to appoint a new manager. After a remarkable start to his Ibrox career, Dick Advoca had been under pressure to turn the club's fortunes around. And by mutual consent, he agreed to take on the post of director of football. Fernando has great respect for the man who brought him to Rangers, even though sometimes he hadn't been his first choice in the team. Dick Advoca was, was, was a great manager. He was uh, straight, honest, he was... Uh, he was very, very hard, I can tell you that. He was a very, very hard man, but he was an honest man, so you could live with the decisions he made, and um, at that point he was a great manager. And, uh, I, I owe him a lot. Almost as if it was scripted, in Dick Avoca's last game in charge, Fernando repaid his debt to his old manager by scoring the equalising goal. The speculation about who would fill the vacant position ended in December, when Glaswegian Alex McLeish took over. The new manager, with new ideas, revitalised the club. Alex McLeish stepped in, and I remember when Alex McLeish came in, we had a big meeting and he said, OK, I'm going to be the new, new coach, I'm going to do it my way, and that's it. And, uh, from that point on, we had uh, started to, to build on, and everything uh, went well. Everybody wanted uh, to do different things again. And maybe that clicked a bit more because, see, the players didn't change. It was the manager that changed. It went a bit better. Alex McLeish still remembers his first impressions of the Dutchman. Fine, you know, he's very... Uh, I thought he was very quick, alive, and always quick to the tackle. And, you know, I thought I'd like to... You know, players of that ilk in my team. Also saw that he had a streak in him where um, the opposition could wind him up. He's, he's got better in that respect, but uh, now and again there's still a wee aberration, and, but you, you, know, you take everything out of the guy, then you, you lose the qualities that he has, because he needs that fighting, fiery spirit. So many passes around and about. Oh, that's a great goal! Well, that's not basketball, that's for sure. That's the way to be much more positive. Up it comes and boom. No doubt where that was ending up. At that point in the season, realistically, the championship was out of reach. But Fernando's career was about to blossom under the new regime. December, league leader Celtic were 13 points ahead, but the players under Alex McLeish were determined to bring silverware back to Ibrox. The CIS and Tenet Scottish Cups were very much in their sights. In both competitions, they would knock out their ancient rivals. They first met in the CIS Cup in February in an epic match which saw 10 bookings, and no, Fernando wasn't one of them. The score was level after 90 minutes. That was a, one of a, was a, was a great game for us. Uh, not so much because we won, but especially the way we won. I think it was one of the games we, we deserved to win and we played so much better than Celtic. Avaladze. There's Contamin. Oh, what a goal! A magnificent goal! Bert Quantumman, of all people, the man who has been criticised, not to say ridiculed so often, puts Rangers in front 
with a tremendous strike. Bert is a Bert is a good player as well, and he had a lot of uh, a lot of problems with the press and with his uh, his form as well, to be honest. Um, but he always kept on going. He never complained. He always kept on going, and I was so happy for him that he scored that goal because he he really deserved it. There, and uh, oh, what a strike! He took it uh, <laughs> took it uh, very well. In March, Fernando at last got what he wanted: his first piece of silverware at Rangers. Newman. Here's Kinejia. Come across to the left now, Kinejia. Better run by Kinejia. On it goes to Flo. And it's there. Poor Andy Flo. He does it again. Rangers two up right at the start of this half. Good run by McCann inside. It's Kinejia. Hughes looks in again. That's a decent ball, and Kanidja. I think uh, the linesman has given the goal. Kanidja has put it in for Rangers. That cup victory restored the confidence of the whole squad, but they still had a titanic Scottish Cup final against Celtic to come. It would be the start of a remarkable run of success for Rangers and Fernando Rickson. Alan Thompson whips the corner in and Boulder's in there and so is Hudson. And Celtic strike first in the Old Firm Cup final. Ferguson. Oh, and the Obby's header might just give Lovenkrantz a chance. He has taken it. Peter Lovenkrantz. What a response from Rangers. He always scores against Celtic. And here's Neil McCann. Newman. Rickson. Sending it in. Oh! And Lovenkrantz was in the hunt again. Good stop. Oh, again, the angle of the run in is first class. Rickson could have had a shot here, but Lovenkrantz made a delightful diagonal run to the back post. And again, just found himself half a yard there. It's at the Celtic end of Hampden Park. It's Neil Lennon who whips it in. And Bowman's there! He's done it! You can feel the tension at this moment around Hampden Park. It's Barry Ferguson! Oh, yes! The captain shows the way! With a fabulous free kick, Rangers were never going to give it up easily. You never can do when the old firm meet. Oh, memories. Yeah. The party afterwards <laughs> comes to mind. No, it was a that was a great game. But um, that was the, the day me, me and Fernando played in the middle, and uh, we done really well together. And it was, as you say, we didn't win the league, but we finished off the season with, with the Scottish Cup. Just a minute to go before extra time. Amoruso. Here now is Neil McCann. Is there going to be a twist in the tail? Lovacrats! Yes, there is! Peter Lovacrats! It had to be him! He has surely won the Scottish Cup for Rangers! That was Peter Lovacrats' moment in there. Uh... Well, what can I say? It was, uh, for us, it was undescribable to win the uh, last uh, minute of uh, that game. So. But we, we, at Rangers, yeah, that it, it's all about winning silverware. Yeah. And for us, we we couldn't go uh, another year without silverware. And uh, that was uh, simply unacceptable. And everybody knew that, even when Alex McLeish came in. And so everybody knew we had to win. And we eventually to get that uh, with the determination we've got, we, we had in that season, um, we were very, very happy. Many people claim to know what footballers are like because they watch them on the pitch. But what is it really like to be a professional footballer once you come off the pitch? It's been said that the players cope by letting off steam when they're not in the spotlight. It's right, you know, absolutely right. Once you see if you're in, in the dressing room in, uh, in, in, 
in Murray Park, it's it's like a bunch of kids. <laughs> they, and honestly, the jokes they make and the things they do, I mean, it's exactly the same thing when I was 14. <laughs> that's the way uh, football players are. And um, in football especially, that's they definitely always uh, stay kids. But um, yeah, as long as you don't push it too far, um, it's fine. Apart from football, Fernando has another passion, tattoos. Um, I've got a couple of tattoos, but just with names of my, my kids and my family on it. But nah, he's he's crazy. He's the, he is, he's a crazy guy. He says he likes the, the penny needles. Oh, strange, it's strange if you ask me. I love tattoos. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody because it hurts. It does hurt, um, definitely. And uh, you should wait that you're absolutely sure. Now, the first tattoo I had was in, uh, in, in Venice Beach. A bad eyes, I always played with contact lenses. So I went to Los Angeles to get my eye laser. So I was all like, hey, yes, I can see again, you know? So we're walking over the beach, and then we're walking, and I see this tattoo shop. And I always wanted a tattoo, but I never wanted to know what. So I, um, I, I saw a dragon, because my is, uh, Chinese star sign is, is dragon. And I don't know, I think it was the first time for this guy or whatever, because it took four hours, four and a half hours till it was done. And it was so sore on my arm, I couldn't believe it. But eventually I was happy. After you're done, you get a bus, you, know, you feel, oh yes, I've done that. You look in the mirror, you feel, it's really, really nice. I was, I was happy with that. Um, and then uh, after that, um, I went to Amsterdam. They got a great shop. They got a, it, it, you got the Hells Angels uh, cafe above, and underneath you got uh, the tattoo shop. And, and as soon as I pass it and I hear it, I said to my wife, oh, I need one. I want to go. It's addictive. It's really addictive. And uh, um, so I have, uh, over the years, I got, uh, I got a lot. When the team isn't performing well, everyone feels the pressure. It's then that the players have to sort out their problems in the dressing room. I always look at myself, first look at myself, see if my display was fine. I know exactly when I don't play well and when I do play well. It's disrespectful to uh, watch uh, other players to say they play bad. Uh, I think that's the very disre disrespectful. If you think that, you should go to the player and don't say that in the press. You should go to the player himself and you can tell him uh, that you think he's not playing very well. I, I, I like players like that. Um... I like people like that, that speak their mind. I don't like somebody that, that tends to mean say things behind people's backs or whatever. He's he straight down the, the middle and I like people like that. And before certain games he'll, he'll see his piece or after a game if something's went wrong he'll, he'll say something. And uh, no, I, I like that bit about him. Everybody is honest in this dressing room. Everybody can look at each other and can say something to each other. And as long as you dad have that in a team, in a dressing room, you've got a good team because uh, that will always, uh, then everybody will always respect each other and work for each other. And, and that is the mo for me the most important thing in, in, a, in a team. And for the rest, whatever, whatever is going to be said or what, who says anything or who stand up and says anything, that doesn't really matter as long as it's um, behind the walls and it's face to face. Fernando's feelings for his club were made clear in the summer of 2005 when he signed another contract for four more years. <laughs> well, because uh, I never want to leave this club. Because this, uh, this is my home and this is my club. And I came here and, and as soon as I came here, I knew this was my home. And uh, that's why I don't want to go away. And that's why I signed a, a deal here. Um, to commit myself uh, to this football club, to this fantastic football club. And uh, that's why I uh, want to stay as long as possible. The only thing is the weather. I mean, I could have done the weather, but uh, okay, I bought a sunbed, so uh, <laughs> so that adds up. No, but I mean, the people here are incredible, and 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 no, I there was never a doubt in my mind. And of course, everyone wants to know the answer to the biggest question surrounding Rickson: Was Fernando really named after the Abba song? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can look that up. Uh, my name is, I'm, I've been born on uh, the 27th of July in 1976. In that month in, uh, in Holland, um, the ABBA song uh, Fernando was on number one. 
you can actually honestly you can look it up on the internet because I wouldn't believe myself either because my, but my mom said when she got me she said uh, that's Fernando because of this uh, because of this song and it's uh, it's an absolute it's absolute true Season 2002-2003 was to be Fernando's most successful. He was moved into the midfield by Alex McLeish, where he formed a successful partnership with Barry Ferguson. The reorganisation of the site, along with the arrival of new team members, would eventually bring the ultimate prize in domestic football, the treble. Arteta tries again from the set-piece. Now Rickson sets himself for the shot. And scores! It's 3-0. Typically, Fernando was quick to play down his contribution to that success and would rather praise the players around him in the midfield. I played with Barry in, uh, in midfield and nearly all the season. And well, I just run up and down and just chased everybody, and, and which, which for me is the best job I can, I, anybody can have, because that's what I am. I can just run uh, and, and go up and down and go that I, I can I can play football of course, but uh, in that season I think the the gaffer uh, used me uh, at my at my best. As soon as I got the ball, give it to Barry, so, and that's what I did. Oh, he done a fantastic job. As you say, he came as a, a right fullback, and uh, the gaffer put him in the, the middle of the park with myself, and uh, that was a partnership I really enjoyed, and I think we we complemented each other when we played, and I really enjoyed it. He, he did really well in the midfield and that, that season we won the championship with the treble. For a long time he was very, very effective. Fernando rightly says that um, he won the ball, he gave it to Barry. And when, when you're doing a specific role, you play your strengths. And he did it extremely well. And uh, the other guy in front of us, he played next to see that, that was Ronald, Ronald the Bull. He played in front of us. So it was, when I, as soon as I had the ball, it was either Ronald or Barry. And for me, that suited incredibly for because I had two great players uh, next to me, which uh, I could play straight away the ball. And they uh, would make sure we, uh, we got a goal. Now the ball. Brilliant turn. That's Ferguson. Oh, that's fantastic play by Rangers. Ferguson gives it the lead. Unbelievable goal. With that freedom in midfield, came the desire to get forward and score. During the crucial Christmas period, at Tynecastle, he proved he wasn't afraid to take responsibility when he turned in a match-winning performance. Uh, making it very, very difficult for the Scotland winger, and he's played his way cleverly out of a tight situation there. It's play on, no, it's one back by McCann, and Newman lofts it in. Here's a chance for Fernando Rickson, and Rangers have scored. Six and a half minutes into the second half, and in the end, that goes down as Alan Mabry's mistake, which sets Rangers up to open the scoring. Shot to Avalanza to the byline. Great ball in for Fernando Rickson. Two for Rickson, three for Rangers. Must be something of a collector's item. It's a good goal from Rangers. They've taken advantage now. Shot out the lads down the left hand side. That's a marvellous ball in. The goalkeeper can't come for it. Ask him to get attacked. Brixen attacked exceptionally well. It's a good header down the way. Good pace in the ball. Giving the goalkeeper no chance. Whether which position I prefer, it doesn't really matter. I, I do my best anywhere. So. Uh, because I, I think as a team as Rangers, if you play fullback, you, you still play as a winger, so and you still play as a midfielder, so it doesn't really matter where I play. That versatility made Fernando a crucial part of Rangers' success that season. His determination and skill on the ball made sure their fight for the title would end in victory. Rickson's corner kick. Newman, up to Moles, good touch, good control, good pass. And Valhara can't keep out here, McCann. Tries to get me on Valdeck, great ball in! Ronald De Boer! 
A terrific goal which makes it 2-1 Rangers. Fernando Rickson, lovely run. Still going. Good touch, here's Michael Morales. 3-1. What a recovery from Rangers. That's a magnificent goal, it's a short free kick, Barry Ferguson is playing the ball to Rickson. And this is a magnificent run from him. At the line, he just gets a touch, it's through Bilharan's legs. Michael Moles, though, he's not hanging about. He's on to the last shot. Real composure here. He knew what he was doing. Rob Douglas, no chance. The rivals met again in March, this time to decide the CIS League Cup and the first part of a possible treble. Thompson hooks it out wide to Larson. Larson again, was covering. Oh, chance here for Levin, Grant's in the box, saved by the keeper, Balls couldn't make it, Kanidja can! Midway through the first half of the CIS Insurance Cup final, and Rangers take the lead! Balls, Levin, Grant's in, chance here for Rangers! He's done it again, against Celtic! Into the last five seconds of normal play. Hartson wide! Oh! What a miss! Foul day. Rab Douglas away. Alec McLeish and Rangers have beaten Celtic. Fernando had won his first trophy of the season, but the race for the championship would be one of the closest for years. So close, in fact, that it would be decided by goal difference on the last day of the season. Celtic were the favourites to win, but in the Ibrox dressing room, every member of the Rangers team knew what was expected of them. Everybody was sure we were going to win the league, and there was absolutely no doubt about it. And it, it's, it, of course, it's easy to say afterwards, but uh, believe me, uh, absolutely nobody, it was, there was no doubt in anybody's mind that we were not going to win it. Could be quite a noise here today. Rickson exchanges passes with Kinesia. Mother Dunfermline uh, chasing the ball at this stage. The burst pass to Kinesia. The pass was behind balls, but he got the shot away. He got the shot in, two and a half minutes gone. Rangers are ahead, and that could be a huge stride towards the title. Well, we went out, we scored in the first minute, I think, or the first five minutes. And then nobody could believe it, but they scored an equaliser after ten minutes or something. It was a great goal, it was a great goal they scored. Early ball in, Brewster. Laid off, and the family to level. On the day when Rangers had to prove they really were the best, Fernando played the way he always knew he could from the day he joined Rangers. His skill and determination made sure the championship trophy came back to Ibrox. Amoruso to Rickson. Ronaldo Burr. Rickson again. Kanisha! He likes to confirm one, doesn't he? His seventh goal of the season against the East End Park side. This is a great finish, but Fernando Rickson plays a very important part in this. You, you can have gave this round, one up, kept fighting for it, looking after Cal finishing. Don't panic, don't hammer the ball, get it on target, pick your spot. Everything is so calm, collected, and that's why the ball's the back of the net. Uh, squared for Rickson. Everyone back for Dunfermline as Rickson lofts it in. And Amoruso did so well to stop that crossing the line. Not a bad ball in either! Not a bad ball for Arvaladze to score Rangers third. 3-0 Celtic at Rugby Park. 
3-1 Rangers at Ibrox. Celtic have the edge. Rangers look to score. McCann's delivery! De Burl's header! 4-1 Rangers! Although we didn't think that, that Celtic would win so emphatically at Rugby Park, but when we heard the goals going in there, we knew we had to get the skates on and the, the messages were coming thick and fast. And it was trying to get our message on to the Fernando closest to me on the, the touchline. And it's always happening, the players want to know and just keep scoring goals. <laughs> McCann turns away from Mason, gets to the byline, and Stephen Thompson scores Rangers 100th league goal of the season. It's the fifth against Dunfermline, and it might be the goal that points Rangers towards the championship. Newman summoning up every ounce of energy to get forward in these closing minutes. McCann gets it back from De Boer. Neil McCann. It's a penalty. It's a penalty against Mark McGarty. Well, I think on the other side, uh, a lot of things happened as well, and but we heard that afterwards. We never heard it uh, during the game. I remember as soon as Miguel put, uh, put Miguel Arteta, as soon as he put the penalty kick in, I knew that was it. This could be the championship winning goal if Mikel Arteta can hold his nerve. He can! Rangers 6, Dunfermline 1. Celtic looking to salvage the situation for the final whistle goes at Rugby Park. Rangers have won their 50th title. Champions. With the remarkable events of the championship victory just sinking in, there was still a Scottish Cup final to play. Some pundits said that Rangers were drained at the end of the season, but Fernando knew they would rise to meet the challenge. It became even better a week later when we won the treble, so <laughs> never experienced anything like that, winning everything in a year. Shot on target, but no great problem for Julian Spironi. I like he's having that trick at the end. Rexon hits it well. McCann's left foot. Lorenzo Amoruso scores. 20 minutes gone in the second half. And is that the parting presence from Amoruso? It's 1 0 Rangers. Dundee's free kick. Full time at Hamden. Rangers have won the treble. Uh, that was one of, uh, well, probably at that stage, uh, the best uh, period I ever had. Fernando and his team had won every domestic trophy. The celebration started all over again, but for one player, they were tinged with sadness. It was the last time Lorenzo Amoruso would play for Rangers. Lorenzo was, uh, he was a great guy as well. I mean, uh, Lorenzo uh, was a typical Italian player, a typical, uh, like, a bit, of a, a bit of a macho, but I liked it in him because he, he, that was the kind of guy he was. He was always there for you, always there for the team, and he, he put everything aside uh, for the team, and uh, he was a great player. And I was very happy to be playing with him. On the pitch, this was the greatest time of Fernando's career. He was playing in almost every game and winning every trophy, but he was having problems in his private life. He had a reputation as a hellraiser, often appearing in the press for all the wrong reasons. When I look back at it, um, it's not been great times. When you, once you're in it, it's, it may look like great times when you're out partying and when you're out uh, having fun and getting drunk and doing stupid things. I mean. It sounds like fun, it looks like fun, but personally, innerly, you're, you're destroying yourself. And I can tell anybody that uh, from experience that you definitely eventually get the, get the bill for it. Yeah, you see what happened. Like his football, he was living his life on the edge. But Fernando began to realise that his lifestyle could eventually affect his whole career. And you think, oh, you're untouchable. 
and you can't do it. And even if you play bad, oh, it's not my fault. You say you go, it's not my fault. It's always somebody else's fault, and you always your. Then injuries, and then then you get like little little pains and little things, and you just can't make that extra meter anymore, and you just can't make that extra thing anymore, and you still don't see it until you get like you get really uh, uh, put on your point by certain people, and they tell you, hey, listen, you need to stay your life up. It was not just Fernando who was having problems. The following season was not good for Rangers. Along with Amoruso, Barry Ferguson left for Blackburn Rovers. It was difficult to play the same lineup for any length of time, and younger players were brought in to shore up the squad. They finished without a trophy. Team spirit never, uh, that was never a problem because everybody was always up for it and everybody always tried their best. Wes McLeish, he had a hard time because he had to fit in new players and other players were leaving. Some players were on, on, on the last, uh, last year contract. So it was a, a mixture of young players coming in. So it was a very, very difficult team for the team to, to get the right balance and the right adjustment uh, in, in, in that season. Barry got sold. Um, which was for, for, for us a very, very big, uh, big loss at that stage because losing a player like that uh, in the heart of your, uh, your, your team is, um, well, you see that that season is irreplaceable. It was at that stage that Fernando realised he had to listen to what others were telling him about his lifestyle. Like anyone else with a problem, it was up to him to decide if he really did want to change. If you don't want to listen, you don't want to see that, then uh, it's uh, going to be the end of your career. And I thank God and I thank uh, all the people around me that uh, they helped me and they kept by me and they helped me as much as possible um, to, to get through all those things. Eventually, Alex McLeish knew he had to confront Fernando face to face about his problems. I struggle with it. I, uh, again, Call it counselling if you like, but it's talking to the, the player and telling him that he's he's wasting his chance. He's got the opportunity, and uh, you know, does he want to look back in the future and wait with loads of regrets? We are um, trying to help Fernando. Obviously, my my motivation is to to help Rangers. That's uh, number one for me. But if um, they can't help themselves, then there's no hope. So Fernando turned the corner because of his own willpower and, and he has to be credited for that. When you get your name in the front pages then it's, it's uh, it, you know, it drags the club down, it besmirches the club's name. And we told him that it wasn't acceptable. Uh, by the end of the day, credit to Fernando, you know, for stopping the, the rot, as it were. And uh, long may it continue, Fernando. He made clear to me that I had to sort out my life. And I had to get my sting straight, or otherwise uh, I'm going to be in, in a, in a, in a, in a self-destruct mode. I thought, he's right. Um, and uh, from that point on, um, I started to live, uh, for me, a better life. Um, it still took a time before, before I got the reward for it, because it still took like half a year or before I finally uh, got all over everything, all the problems and all the things off the park. So, but they saw already also in me that uh, I, I was serious about uh, getting my life straight and then uh, they, uh, they backed me and um, I was very happy for that. Um, so eventually I'm sitting here, don't drink, um, I train every day, train my best, try work hard, keep my head down, don't get into a problem. And, um, I know um, I feel much better uh, the way I live my life now. When Fernando arrived for pre-season training, Alex McLeish knew he had a different player on his hands. Rickson was leaner and fitter, but more importantly, his attitude had changed. He still had a passionate will to win, but now he can control the wilder side of his personality. As he says to you, he's calmed in. <laughs> uh, no, he's, he's... If we have a boys' night out, he never misses it, which is important. 
uh, he's always there. Um, but off the pitch, he's just like him. He enjoys to, to go out and, and let his hair down, so to speak. Um, but no, he's, he's a good guy off the park. I was in my last year of my contract. I know uh, all the problems, of course, in the, in, in the past. I knew I had more to lose than to, uh, than to win. But winning something back and winning respect back was getting my head down, getting on, working hard and uh, getting my performance up. And to be honest, I was very lucky that the team, that the team I was had around me uh, picked me up very well. And uh, eventually I had to work myself very hard for it, but um, the team helped me so much with that. So um, that what uh, eventually uh, got me through everything. That transformation off the pitch changed his performance on it. Once again, Rangers were under pressure to perform well in the early part of the season. But by August, they had lost to Celtic and were out of the Champions League. They needed positive results quickly, and Fernando was there with a wonder goal. Here comes Rickson, goes it in! What a goal from Fernando Rickson! A wonder strike from the Dutchman! Well, it was not a wonder goal because I practiced hard enough for it. <laughs> no, um, at that stage we went to a, to a rough phase. We went to a, to a very difficult phase. That was our chance to bounce back and get a bit of confidence back. I remember Paulo Vanoli wanted to take it, I said no. I said, uh, go away, I will put it in. You can ask him, I said, don't worry, I'll put it in. But that, that's not a flute, that's not a flute, because Fernando is one of the guys who stay back and practice, 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 free kicks, and hitting it in that manner, in which he did in the Aberdeen game. When I scored a goal, that the whole team went to the corner, and I think that, that actually uh, summed up the whole season, because, um, you see that everybody came and everybody was so happy, like they scored themselves. And um, that's where I made for me was uh, quite special with that goal. The next phase of the CIS Cup brought Celtic to Ibrox. It was a typical old firm encounter with everyone giving their all. After 90 minutes, it was one goal each. And Thompson's given it away. Here comes Sean Avalanti. On to Nacionova, Avalanche's made the run, comes back to him, lays it back, Namucci, good save, Pujol! It was a terrific move by Rangers, David Marshall could do nothing, and his first old firm goal, he's dreamt about it, Dan Pujol makes it Rangers 1, Celtic 1. Throughout the match, Fernando had turned in a remarkable performance, and it was no surprise that he went on to set up the winning goal. Delivers it, looking for Baldy, the ball comes back, picked up by Rickson, nice little slip ball, and that beautifully worked by Rangers. Rangers rampaging forward, nobody's coming to Rickson. He'll got a choice of left or right, it should come to Sean Avalanti, controls Avalanti! The perfect counter-attack puts Rangers ahead in the League Cup quarter-final. They move the ball from back to front, Fernando Rickson on the edge of his box, Substitute Sean Avalanti shoots Rangers into the lead. Quite incredible counter attack here. Great run from Logan, you can see him here. Great run across him to leave a space for Avalanti. Great, that's a magnificent run and a great finish from the left hand corner there. It was a very, very good victory for us. At that point, a lot of people wrote us off. They didn't expect us to come back every time. And every time we bounced back and every time we came back, uh, um, when we were put when we were put down, and um, um, it was but it was the whole team that bounced back, and that actually um, summed up the whole season that year. The League Cup run was a personal triumph for Fernando. He not only scored three vital goals, he also lifted the trophy as the Rangers captain. Fernando Rickson! He did it against Livingston at the weekend. He does it now in the League Cup semi-final. And if there was any doubt before, it's all been removed. Rangers are through to the CIS League Cup final. It's Rangers 4, Dundee United 1. Rickson fires it in! And Rickson scores! He loves this competition! 
Aberdeen scored against Aberdeen, scored against Dundee United, and now in the final, against Aberdeen. Aberdeen are back in the Premier League. 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 Aberdeen are back in the that uh, was, uh, I never even dreamed about that. So, I mean, that's how far away that was for me. A Dutch guy from uh, somewhere south of Holland, uh, a small guy coming here to Rangers and eventually become captain and winning uh, the Scottish League in his cup. I mean, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I don't think anybody ever done that. So, uh, for me, when I look back, I still get goosebumps when I think about it. So, yeah, for me, that's the biggest honor I ever, ever, ever got. During that CIS Cup run, Barry Ferguson came back from Blackburn, but Fernando retained the captain's armband and welcomed the return of his old teammate. Oh, I'm happy Barry's back. <laughs> Believe me, I'm very, very happy Barry is back. I played with some really good players because I played in the national team and I played, in, played with some unbelievable players. And I think playing next to him and playing with him and the team is for me every day an honour. And I can't believe he's even younger than me, so that <laughs> even is more strange. But uh, Barry's got, he's got any skill, he's got any skill and determination, he's got uh, his fighting spirit, he's got, he's got everything. He can score, he can defend, he can run up and down, he's fit. He's, uh, for me, the most complete player uh, I've ever played with. And with the Barry, well, like I said, the best player I've played with. In the race for the championship, Rangers were determined to recover from the disappointing start. Fernando would have his best season at Ibrox, not only leading the club as captain, but providing goals from set pieces. Find this ball coming from Rick something. Just just past this the penalty spot. Plenty of pace on it. There it goes exactly there. It's a hit of a push all. A fantastic ball, right on that penalty spot. A great run at the ball there with that sort of delivery, that sort of pace. Only needs a touch from anybody, a defender or a forward. This time it was that man, Dado Perso. Super header, keeper no chance. Rangers two, Celtic nil. Fernando started hitting free kicks left, right, and centre, and scoring. He scored a few goals. His delivery from corners, I think, he scored 20 odd goals from set pieces last year. Uh, but Richardson was also meant on a lot of that. Malcolm played it in quickly. Here's Purcell trying to set up someone. And he's managed it again. It's a brilliant finish for Rangers. It's Fernando Rickson. Short corner again preferred. Rickson plays it in. Oh, it's a delightful header. There, turned off the line by Kevin McNaughton from Steve Thompson. Well, that would have been a super goal, that, but it's still with Rangers and Rickson. That's the four! Goal number four, Fernando Rickson's third of the season. It looks like ball, or is it Rickson? Every Celtic match is special for the supporters and players. There's no fixture like it in the world. It's every player's dream to score at Celtic Park. In January, Fernando's dream was realised. Here's Hutton, who is delivered, and Rickson! Fernando Rickson equalises for Rangers right at the start of the second half. It's a wonderful header, but 10 out of 10 to Alan Hutton. What a delivery. They said McGeady, who's left one-on-one -on -one here, doesn't stop it coming into the box. Hutton makes half a yard. Terrific ball whipped in. Rickson gets across the front of Balder. Not a goal you'd expect Celtic to lose, given their aerial dominance at that end of the pitch. Half a yard is all that Fernando Rickson required. Good downward header. Rob Douglas never getting there. Rangers back in it. It's a terrific downward header. 
Well, that's one way to shut up the chorus of You'll Never Walk Alone. In February, Rangers met Celtic in the league. Fernando had never won at Celtic Park, but that day he helped change history. Wilson back to Vignal. It's a great effort by Vignal! It's gone through Rob Douglas and Rangers have the lead! Rangers working extremely hard here. That's a fine tackle by Ferguson to win possession back. Ferguson wants the ball kept by Rangers. Through the middle it goes, therefore, no ball. A slip there by Lawson. It's goal number two, and it'll stand all right. Rangers have scored again. They all stemmed from the hard work. Barry Ferguson, Fernando Rickson in the middle of the midfield area. Takes the opportunity. Three players, ball watching. But what a great finish that is. Sutton looking for Hudson, Batrus again came to meet that, and the final whistle goes. So the Rangers players go to their fans to celebrate. It's been a long time since they enjoyed this feeling here at Celtic Park. And across they go, Novo celebrating. These Rangers fans will not be in any hurry to leave, and they have certainly had a massive performance from their players. By now. Every point was crucial, and it looked like Rangers would have to settle for a draw against Hearts at Tynecastle. But in the dying minutes, they were awarded a penalty, and Fernando decided to take the responsibility. There's Kayakos. Was he fouled? Was he pushed by Lee Miller? He thinks so. Well, I would have been worried if I had to take it, because <laughs> I've I missed a couple of penalties uh, a few seasons back. Um, no, but that shows. Uh, a lot of bottle to go up and take that. I was worried when somebody steps up and take a penalty, um, but I thought at that time uh, we still felt very confident. We were very relieved that um, you know, it was Rickson stepping up. I think we'd have been less confident if somebody else had perhaps stepped up and maybe one of the, the, the guys who hadn't been taking penalties suddenly grabbed the ball and wanted to see his name in light. Well, this is such a crucial moment, perhaps in the entire SPL season. The key to the pressure on that moment is to have no doubt. They say the glass is half full or uh, half empty. That's the way you have to think about that as well. And that certain point, if you go out and you go stand behind the ball and you go to yourself, I'm going to score here, you're going to score. And uh, there was no doubt in my mind that I'm not going to put it in. Fernando Rickson has the crucial task here. This could win the game for Rangers. It's Rickson against Gordon. It's a terrific penalty kick by Fernando Rickson. Quite magnificent in the circumstances. His composure was terrific. The accuracy of the kick was outstanding. And Rangers look to have won this match in the most dramatic circumstances. Fernando's goal contribution was not over. That season, he played in every game, in every competition, and scored his last goal in the vital run-in to the championship. Good play by Rickson. Novo will want to have a run here at McDonald, I suspect. Perso did well, he's away from Mann. Good chance this again. It's two to Rangers! Fernando's performances were recognised when he won the Player of the Year award, shared with John Hartson. Unsurprisingly, he also won the Rangers Player of the Year, at a time when everyone else outside Ibrox had written off Rangers' title chances. I'm just a, I'm just a football player who has to work hard. I know my abilities. I'm not, I'm not a, a Zidane or I'm not a Ronaldinho or I'm not like Robbie Ferguson. I'm not that kind of quality player. I need to work hard, and that's what I try to do. And then eventually, getting a board like that is for me an, an ultimate prize. Fernando, congratulations. Player of the year, how good is that? Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know what to say. 
Everybody's been talking about how this season you're, you're a different player, you're a more mature player, that you've changed. Do you think you've changed? Yeah, I've changed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you're holding two trophies at the moment. Uh, are you confident there's maybe another one to collect yet? <laughs> I'm very, very confident. That's good to hear. The Rangers Player of the Year, Fernando Rickson. I have to be honest, I got my confidence from Marvin Andrew, so <laughs> he kept us uh, believing uh, every week in, week out. He has uh, only one answer and he says it's uh, the guy up there who decides what's going to happen. And uh, to be honest, uh, after last season, uh, I think he's right. by uh, Buffel, who has to commit himself, he does well, gets it away from Brown, through to Tussle, little touch by him, Buffel again, he's got Novo on the right-hand side, in comes that to Novo, drives it across, and Tussle, and there at the near post, and Novo is absolutely delighted with himself, and Alec McLeish has a lifeline here at Easter Road. I remember before the game, and we know what we had to do, we had to win, and that's the maximum we could have done. Everybody says we were given it, but I don't think that works that way. And we got the reward for the for the effort we put in it. Everybody kept believing in it, and uh, eventually we, we we got it. As things stand, this suits both. The Bernian and Rangers of only Motherwell can uh, pinch a goal from Celtic at Fir Park. That's in for Britain. Barga wins it, there's Poran. Now uh, McDonald. The goal scored for Motherwell! Has he snatched the league from Celtic? The Celtic fans are making for the exits. Alec McLeish looking for a miracle here. And he'll be thinking back to, well, a huge roar goes up in the stand. The Rangers stand here. And Motherwell, we are told, have scored. And then I remember two minutes before time, or five minutes before, everybody started cheering. And, and, and we couldn't believe because we thought, oh, what is that? And um, then the Ralph said on the side, yeah, it's 1-1. One, one, it's one, one. And then one, and one minute later, they started cheering again. And that's when we thought that game, their game is over. And then the Ralph said, no, no, it's 2-1 for, for, for Motherwell. And we couldn't believe it. The referee he looks at his watch there. Alec McLeish is signalling here. Motherwell scored again. McDonald again. It's Motherwell 2, Celtic 1. It's incredible. It's unbelievable. Look at the celebrations there. What a turnaround here this afternoon. You could never have imagined this. Rangers were happy just to keep possession, hoping for an equaliser. They haven't got one miracle, they've got two. And it looks as if Rangers are about to win. The most unlikely championship, and it's all over. And Alec McLeish is swamped by his backroom staff. Fans are going mad here. Well, the faces tell it all. They cannot believe it. Rangers are champions of Scotland for the 51st time in their history. Fernando Rickson needing a bit of a help up. It's a very heavy trophy, but he'll manage it. Rangers champions for the 51st time. I was really pleased for Brixham that he could lift the league championship. But Brixham, um, it was a fitting end to a great season for him. Uh, well, it's, it's a big achievement to come back from uh, Rittenhoff in uh, August, uh, September and then win the title uh, so close. But uh, I think uh, overall, over the whole season, we showed we were the best team. And uh, uh, I read the papers uh, today and I think it actually sums it up. Uh, first is everything and second is nothing. So. That was probably Fernando's greatest season. His performances spurred his team on to a championship when everyone thought it was a hopeless cause. Looking back on it, uh, I think uh, it was uh, my best season. But uh, I still have a lot of seasons to go. So um, I know I can still improve because I can still do much, much better than I did that season. I can be a much more value of, uh, for the team than I, than I showed already that season. And uh, that's what I'm working on now.
That's a great angle ball. Ricks in another chance for the second. 2-0 to Rangers. The finish from Rickson. And surely now the Champions League group stages for weeks. Fernando Rickson is one of the most determined and dedicated players at Ibrox today. He has fought hard to overcome both personal and professional problems and has become one of the great Rangers heroes.